Are my judges ready? Yes, sir. Yes. The loud ringing of an anvil used to be a very common thing. This noise was very, this noise was very loved by the people, as it was the sound of their nails, tools, and weapons, all being made by the same man. Hello, my name is Joel Lovelace, and I'll be talking to you today about forging. Forging is a dying art that has been taken over by things such as robots, machines, and factories. This is very unfortunate because most things that are made in factories are not very good. As I grew up, I always would watch my dad build things in the shop. I would watch him take raw materials, things such as angle iron, tubing, and any kind of raw material metal you buy out of a mill. I would watch him take these raw materials and build things as simple as an oxygen settling cart, yet as complex as a quick attach system for a tractor. Another reason I chose to do forging was because it's a dying art and I want to keep it alive. The blacksmiths, when they were nece necessary for a town to thrive, they would make anything from a nail to swords. They would repair wagons. So they were the town's hardware store, weaponry, tool store, and auto mechanic shop for a wagon. If your wagon broke and you needed a part for your wagon, you'd go to the blacksmith. Or if you just needed a new part, again, the blacksmith would fix you up. Factories versus forging. Factory metalwork is very high prices, I'm sure some of you know, and most time it's not even that high quality. Where with the forge, as you can see, everything I have here is made of scrap metal. Um, most factories are, they're all computer. So that means that everything in a factory is made from a template. Well, if everything's made the exact same, if there's one flaw in that one piece, there's going to be a flaw in every piece. Um, with forging, you can add your own custom braces. You can build it out of different steel. You can do anything you need to do to strengthen your, your product. Um, another thing is most factories don't offer custom work, and if they do, it's going to be at a very high price. Whereas with forging, everything you make is going to be custom. Even if somebody comes to you and gives you a template of something to make, you're going to make it in your own way. You're going to put your own style to it, whether you want to or not. It's just the way that you do things. Um, then, like I said, Everything you make is going to be stronger and better than almost anything in a factory. Um, repurposing metal, like I said before, everything I made here is scrap metal, aside from a couple of bolts and the hair dryer. Um, I actually used one of these in my Ford, that's why I included this picture, and that is a brake rotor off a car. I'm sure most of you guys have brake rotors on your cars. Any vehicle that has disc brakes is going to have a brake rotor. Um, so that's why I included that picture. This other picture over here, to most of you, I'm sure that just looks like a big pile of junk. But to me, when I look at that, I look at that and think all the, the old tools and all the home decor items I could make out of that and make money with. Uh, that's why I included that picture. Um, there are also lots of not so material things to forging. Uh, it gives you character. Working anywhere is going to give you good character and ambition. But working with metal is a little different than working with wood. With wood, if you cut a piece too short, if you cut a board too short, you're going to have to throw it away. Um, there's not much you can do with a board that's cut too short. However, with metal, if you cut a piece of metal too short, there's always a way to make it work. It may be, you may not think of it at first, so you may have to put it down for a while. And that's how that ties into patience. If you can't figure it out, you may have to put it down for a couple of days, think about it, and then give it another shot later. And this would give anybody patience. Um, the next thing is, it ties in is craftsmanship. If you lay that down for a couple of days, then think about it, and you think of new ways you can do things. Well, the more you learn how to do new things, you're going to learn how to do things in your own way, and that's craftsmanship. Um, making anything out of any kind of scrap metal is craftsmanship. Uh, and once you see that you're, you're making these beautiful works, uh, 
just anything, even if it's a tool, uh, you're going to see your progress and you're going to want to keep going. And then that urge to keep going ties right back into ambition. So it's really just a big cycle. Um, this is my actual product I made. Uh, this is my forge. The top piece here is a lawnmower deck flipped upside down. Uh, the inside here, where the fire comes out, where all your hot coal is, that's the rotor. This pipe for the legs is actually just leftover pipe we had from a corner post project along with the center pipe. Um, the way this works is coal does not burn on its own. It's like a rock that comes out of the ground. Uh, so it doesn't burn very good on its own. So what I do, how I get the fire going is I get kindling. I like the kindling in the fire pot. And once I see that the kindling is getting hot, I then slowly add coal and give it a little air because, like I said, it won't burn on its own. So that's how you get your coal burning. Um, another thing I made is this deer head. I, this is kind of a symbol to me because I'm not very artsy, but this is a symbol to me to show that you can almost you can make just about anything from scrap coal. That's all scrap metal. It was just sitting, most of it was just sitting in a bucket, just resting away. And so that's that's why I made that. And it's kind of symbolized how you can use scrap metal. It's everywhere, rather than just letting it sit there and rot. Try to use it for something. Um, rather than paying the high price of factory work, try to try to make things yourself. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is it's not going to work. However, on the other hand, you could gain a lifelong skill, save a little money on metal, and you could have a good time and have a tradition you can pass down to your future generations. Thank you for watching. Are there any questions? Yes. Yes. What? Okay, so you made a forge. What is the anvil? The anvil I made, this is the anvil I made. This is also another example of something that is scrap metal. The actual body of the anvil is a piece of railroad track that has been in our family for a long time. Uh, the top here, now it's much wider. That is a piece of bush hog blade. My dad was bush hogging one day and he broke the blade. So we decided to use that for the, to widen the face of the anvil and also gives it more rebound. When you hit it and it bounces, that's what you want because instead of just hitting something it's just a thud, it rebounds back up for your next hit. So that's, I wish I could tell you that's the best anvil I've ever made, but it's not. So I asked for an anvil for my graduation present. I didn't want to carry it up here because it's really heavy. <laughs> so. so you, uh, you know, melted those two pieces of metal together with your forge. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just fine. not. I'm not. Yeah. I understand. Cool. Um, we welded it. We used an arc welder. Okay. Yeah, I should have included that. But yeah, there's a there's just a, an arc weld bead right okay. through there that holds it on. So to uh, join two pieces of metal together with your forge. Uh, you use your anvil, what else? Well, that is something I haven't got into a whole lot because that's called forge welding. And that is a that's a pretty big skill to master. Uh, there's not a whole, whole lot of people that can do it at an efficient level. But to do, I'm going to eventually try it for too long. And uh, to do that, you, you get your coal, like really, you get it like white hot. You get it as hot as you can get it. And uh, you get your two pieces in there. Sometimes you have to flatten each piece so that they sit flush with each other, with each other. Mm -hmm. And you get them like white hot, get them as hot as they can before they start melting. And you take borax. I'm not exactly sure what that does. I think it keeps forge scale, which is just like slag. I think that keeps forge scale from developing in between your weld, your forge weld. So that way it sticks better, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Have you made any knives? Yeah, there's. This is a, just out of a railroad spike. It's one of the knives I made. And so, uh, did you suffer any fatigue in uh, getting that hammered down? Well, the 
first time I ever lit up my forge, oh, I took a T post, did a little cut off piece from a T post, mm -hmm. and I just hit it. Just they hit something, so it hit some hot metal. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first time I used the forge, it, it, it does, it wears your arm down. It's like when I was drawing the tines out for this, I, my arm got really tired, but now I don't really notice it unless I'm just really hammering a lot. Are there any other questions? Can you tell us about the tools? Are they homemade tools on the forge, and, and how to, what, what's their uses? Yeah, um, well, these two tools are both just made out of I don't know, however big that is. It's just round stuff. Um, this is just a poker. If you need to dig a piece of clinker out, which is the impurities that burn out of coal, you need to pull some of that out. You can use this, or you can use the ladle. The ladle is pretty handy for going around the edge of your forge and building a wall uh, to hold the heat into the center of the forge. And it's also good for getting forge out of the coal bin, or getting coal out of the coal bin. What kind of coal do you use? I use anthracite rice coal, <laughs> which isn't really the right kind of coal for a forge. You're supposed to use bituminous lump coal. I have some rice coal right here. This is what it looks like. It looks like really small rocks and bituminous coal, lump coal, is a little bit bigger. And when this stuff heats up, opposed to bituminous lump coal, lump coal when lump, when bituminous lump coal gets hot, it burns the impurities out and turns into coke. Coke is what you want. Coke is pure coal, no impurities, because they've already burnt out. But the anthracite, rice coal, which is about all you can find around here, uh, when it gets hot, it turns into clinker. It burns the impurities out. And the impurities form into these pieces of, I don't, it kind of feels like aluminum. I don't really know what it's made of. It's just the impurities of the coal. So that's that's the difference in the coal. You can find anthracite rice coal at Tractor Supply. It's like six or seven bucks for a 40 pound bag. However, bituminous lump coal is like a dollar a pound. So, <clears throat> anything else? Does the clinkers have a use or the a byproduct or do they just have to throw them away? Uh, I just throw them in the driveway. I think they used to use them for like traction or something like during the snow. I think it's probably work good for that. Well, you go, you're doing your parents' service. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great suggestion for another graduation by two minutes a month call. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll take that. Any other questions? Do you think you do this in your official somehow? Um, yeah, I can see my definitely see myself continuing this. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, I don't think you could make a living doing it unless you just were insanely good at it. Uh, Should we look for you on that TV show? Forge of Fire. Forge of Fire. Yeah. Well, maybe someday. Okay. Someday. I'm actually planning when I retire from my job, which will be a long way down the road. <laughs> <laughs> but. I think it'd be cool to be the blacksmith of Silver Dollar City. Thanks for the other cool. Are there any other questions? Yes, last one, or my last one. So, in your research about how many blacksmiths are there in the country, I mean, is there like a uh, hundred? Are we talking thousands still? Oh, I, there's probably thousands still. Okay. Uh, nothing like it used to be. And there used to be one in every town, like I said. My presentation, it was a necessity for the town to thrive. Uh, now it's just hobby blacksmiths for the most part. Because, like I said, everything's been taken over by factories and computers, machines, robots. So. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you.